Yeah, I'll just open with uh, I'm really proud of our guys. Um, you know, I don't I don't know if anybody really understands uh, the college football environment this year is just so different. 2020 has been so different in terms of uh, motivation, uh, what these kids go through. You know, they sacrifice a lot to have this season and they don't get to go and do things they normally do. And they the season has really been long. And I think all across college football with the injuries, the COVID concerns, the cancellations, uh, it's been a very unique year. And I just want to give our kids a lot of credit for sticking through it, staying together, continuing to fight. I mean, you, you talk to coaches across the country and they're having trouble even keeping kids out um, to play football. And this group has really stuck together and uh, I, I want to give them a lot of credit for that. Hey, Kirby, I kind of want to open with just how good does it feel to finally have, you know, the rushing game doing what it's supposed to do at Georgia, you know, just pounding it and pounding it. And what went into practice this week to make it, you know, make Georgia able to do that against South Carolina? Well, let, let, let's be honest. You know, it, a lot of it has to do with the other team and what they do. So we didn't call a lot of different runs. We didn't go out and reinvent the wheel to run the ball. We we, we played a team that had three or four guys out. You know, they had some, some COVID uh, issues, a couple other injuries that probably hurt their depth. They're a very uh, beat up uh, football team. Uh, and they're probably just not as stout as Mississippi State is up front. But with that said, our guys came out from the very beginning. They knew that, 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 that South Carolina had some guys out. They didn't play down that level. They played physical. They knocked people off the ball, um, and they ran the ball. And, and, and I thought that our O-line second effort and our back second effort was the difference in the game. Hey, Coach. Uh, obviously, this year you don't uh, haven't had any opportunity to play a lot of different guys, but you did today in the second, you know, it's fourth quarter, especially entirely different offensive line. Arian Smith called a touchdown. Just how, I don't know, important was that uh, to be able to get that uh, tonight? It's, it's so unfortunate that you don't get a chance to do that, but it's the world we live in, you know. It's just the the, the, the conference schedules made it tough, and uh, and our inability to get a big lead has made it tough. But I was proud of those guys. I certainly um, – wish that we could play them more. You know, that's, that's what kids do. They come to Georgia to play in the games. And uh, the games we've been in, we haven't been able to do that. So I was proud of Arian Dejon Edwards, just what a warrior he was to continue to run the ball with toughness and able to get Broderick in the game to play. Darnell played a lot. Um, we played a, a lot of young guys on the defensive line that didn't have a real good series there. You know, we, we, we subbed out and put some threes in and, and didn't play real well that last drive that they scored on. So, But that's the way you learn. I've been around it for years where I've been very fortunate to be at places when you get a lead, you put them in, and you find out a lot about a kid. You find out, hey, he may still be a year away, but getting that uh, experience under his belt is, is invaluable. Thanks. We'll next go to Chip Towers, followed by Connor Riley. Coach, could you just assess the overall play of uh, JT a little bit? Obviously, this was a very different game that you, he was asked to uh, play today. How did you think he uh, did? What was your assessment? I thought he did a good job. He took the things that the defense gave to him. Uh, he made some good throws. Um, he understands protections. He knows what covers they're in. Um, he, he, he did what we asked him to do. And, uh, you know, I thought the one ball to Jermaine on the wheel down our sideline was the one I wish he, he could have back. I think he underthrew it a little bit, and Jermaine may have still been able to catch it, but I thought he, I thought he played well. He understands uh, what we're trying to do, and uh, he did a good job handling the offense. Hey, Kirby, you talked a little bit about a freshman earlier who played later in the game. Jalen Carter looked like he made a couple of big plays out there early. How has he sort of progressed in these recent weeks, especially when you haven't had Julian Rochester or Jordan Davis out there? Yeah, he's gotten better and better. I mean, he was already playing. He's played in every game, I think, this year. So he's he's grown up a lot faster than some of the other guys. Uh, he's very talented. Um, he, he continues to work hard and get better. The sky's the limit. But he's got to work really hard to, to realize his potential. But uh, he did make some knockback plays, and, and we got to be more disruptive with uh, guys like him. We'll next go to Dean Leggy, followed by Seth Emerson. Kirby, you were talking about the sacrifice that the kids have made this year. What, I mean, is it just been, is there a bit one example that you can think of besides Thanksgiving week with them sticking together? Yeah, I mean, two, two off weekends, they can't, they can't really go anywhere. They can't really do anything. They're, 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 they're scared to death of, of getting COVID or affecting a teammate. And, you know, it's just tough. They're families. You know, I don't think anybody even talks. They, we've got kids with relatives and family members that have, uh, 
been in hospital, lost. Um, we had a coach lose his father. I mean, it's, it's just it, – it's tough and it's trying. And they've stuck together. And, and, and that, look, the support system we have at Georgia is tremendous. From the administration all the way down, they give us tremendous support. So to have people in your organization like uh, Jonas Jennings, like – all Brian Gant, like those guys, they're there for our players and support them when doubt creeps in. You know, do, do, do I want to keep doing this for, for two, three more weeks? You know, and, and I think, you know, I think sometimes the, the media perception is that it's just like, oh, they, they love it, it's fun. They, they, they have to go out there and work really hard. And uh, I think, you know, for them guys, for our guys to stay together as hard as, as close as they have, it's been uh, tremendous for me to see that. Kirby, I know. Every game's different. A lot depends on the opponent. But does it seem like this point of the season, Todd, with the offense and the, the play calling and the rhythm, is, is really starting to get a rhythm and feel for the strengths of the offense and, and what you need to do every game to really you know, apply those strengths? Yeah, I, I definitely think that. I think he's a really good play caller. He's really uh, does a good job being aggressive. I think he's been playing with a – you know, a, a partial deck some of the some of the games because of the injuries and the youth. And we knew that. Like, we knew there was going to be youth and that we were going to invest in that youth and that it was going to grow and get better. And, uh, you know, I think that we know we've got some really good young players on offense that have a lot of potential, uh, that we've got to try to maximize that potential and, and keep getting them better. But I like the rhythm of things and uh, certainly think that the players hearing the plays – Week seven, week eight, week nine are a lot better off than they were week one, two, and three. We'll next go to Jake Rowe, followed by Brandon Sudge or Jed May. Uh, Kirby, was there ever a point in that game uh, where maybe on the headset or whatever that you you guys kind of figured out that that you your offensive line was taking control of it and that it, there was just nothing South Carolina was going to do about running the ball because it really seemed like you know from there in the second quarter on that that you guys maybe kind of figured something out there and and didn't think it was worth putting the ball in the air no it's not that i mean you, you take what they give you right i mean it's it's i mean it's just an opportunity to run the ball and and win the game that's our ultimate goal is to win the game and that's what we wanted to do we weren't going to throw it just to throw it i mean we, we 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 took some shots we took some first and 10 shots we had one to jermaine on the sideline we missed we had one uh I think he threw the ball away, made a good decision on a shot play that uh, he ended up throwing away because the guy wasn't there. So, I mean, it wasn't like we came out and said, we're just going to run it, we're going to throw it. We're going to do what we got to do to be successful. Hey, uh, Kirby, um, so I want to see if you could comment or confirm that uh, D D D Dewan Mathis is uh, no longer with y'all. I mean, if that is the case, can you speak to what um, – the conversations that they all had uh, leading up to that. You finished with leading up to what? That's it. That's like leading up to him, not probably. Yeah, Dewan and I have had several conversations. Dewan's been very communicative. He's uh, handled things really well. And uh, the stuff that goes on with Dewan and, and our team and us is really a, a team-related deal. So I'm not really going to comment on it. But Dewan's handled everything with first class. We'll next go to uh, Mark Weiser, followed by David Pascal. Kirby, you, you alluded to, uh, I guess, kind of, you know, South Carolina and, and Coach Bobo being shorthanded, depleted on, on defense in particular. Uh, I know there's a lot of, you know, talk about the matchup of, of two good friends. Did, did you feel for him, uh, you know, beyond the fact that uh, you want to beat South Carolina, just he had a, a deck that was uh, stacked against him in that regard? No, he doesn't. He doesn't want or need my pity. I mean, he doesn't. He, he's, he's a he's a football coach, and he takes his team and he motivates his team and he gets them ready to go out and play. And uh, I thought they had some good spark there when they got the ball driving on us. They did it with a freshman quarterback, and uh, he he had good numbers because they made it really simple for him and got him out of the pocket and moved the pocket with him and did a nice job managing that. So it, it he doesn't need my pity, and I, I'm not. I'm not giving him any. I mean, our job is to go out and win the football game, and uh, that's what we're trying to do. 
Kirby, you talked earlier about running on a beat up team against a beat up team, but you guys came out with a lot of energy. And I guess I'm based this off a couple of questions you've already said, or a couple of statements you've already said, but is it tough to gauge if, you, if I said, have, did you play your best game tonight of the season, or is it just too tough to kind of gauge given, given their situation? Yeah, I don't, I don't know that you can gauge that. I mean, it's easy to say that, but I mean, you just look at statistics and that's what people do, but it's hard to say that because the, 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 the quality of competition was not as high as even South Carolina's been sometimes during the year. And that's just I'm being honest, you know, I mean, I'm being honest. So, I mean, we played against some better teams and we played good against some better teams at times and we just hadn't put a whole team, the whole game together. And that was our goal today. So I can sit here and tell you, we played a complete game, a defense, special teams, offense overall, but but I mean, I also know that uh, a lot of that comes from our kids growing up and, you know, them having some guys out. Look, we got, we got guys out too. We got some guys that weren't able to make the trip for the first time because we, we, we had some issues. So we're all going through it. We're all going through it, and it's tough. We'll next go to Lance McCurley, followed by Jay Black. Okay, uh, we'll go straight to Jay Black then. Jay, you have a question. I'm good, Mike. Uh, how about Jed May? You have a question, Jed May, followed by uh, Emily with Channel 46. Uh, yeah, Kirby, uh, over these past two games, do you sort of feel like the offense is sort of getting close to reaching that balance you've been striving for? And, you know, looking ahead, does it sort of give you confidence seeing what they can become, you know, later this year and, you know, potentially heading into next year too? Yeah, I'd like to think so. Um, you know, we've got some seniors out there that aren't going to be back, that are going to have to be replaced. But uh, I'm, I'm really just focused on the next week of Vanderbilt and saying this is the seniors' last home game, and we want them to go out on top. They've got a chance to be the winningest or possibly close to the winningest senior class to ever play at Georgia, and they're not even going to get a – you know, a complete season, a, a ten-game conference schedule. So to 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 put that in there with their four years, pretty tough. And to still come out with the most wins possibly ever of a senior class, that's what I'm worried about for them. Is I want them to to be able to have that feather in their cap and uh, that they help build this thing at Georgia. Hey, coach, do you feel like your backs entered this one with something to prove? Did you feel like this week of practice they were, I don't know, thinking about? last weekend's game and, and just how they weren't able to run the ball and they did so well tonight? I don't think they were thinking about that. I think they were thinking because they ran the ball really hard last week. I thought their offensive line was thinking that way. And our offensive line had a more of a, a bully mentality of we're going to run the ball and we're going to get physical and we're going to move people. And um, and they were able to do that. I mean, every, uh, every cut and every um, snap was a wear and tear on their defensive line. And we tried to to take the totality effect of a bunch of snaps and hitting them. We only have time for two more questions. We'll wrap up with Jeffrey Collins from the Associated Press, followed by Michael Cunningham. I'm good. I'm good. No question. Thank you. Well, with that, we'll uh, call it a day then and let uh, the bus get back to Athens. Thank you all. Congratulations, Coach. <laughs>